Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about the volatile keyword in Java. Uh, we'll see uh, an example as well and we'll discuss how volatile keyword works uh, in Java basically. So uh, there are few important points uh, I have listed in this slide uh, related to this keyword. Right? Let's go through the, these points. So basically, <clears throat> before starting volatile keyword, I would like to say that uh, volatile keywords was introduced in the Java file and basically this is very poorly documented. So developer has really very good understanding about this keyword. So here first point I have listed uh, with respect to synchronization. Synchronization in Java is possibly by using a uh, keyword synchronization, synchronized as well as volatile keyword. Both keywords basically helps you to make your code uh, synchronized or thread safe right in java we can but there are uh, subtle differences between these two keywords in java we can not have synchronized variable right using synchronized keyword with a variable is illegal and will result in compilation error instead of using a synchronized variable in java we can use uh, the java volatile variable which will instruct jvm threads to read the volat read the value of the volatile variable from the main memory and don't cache it locally right so every thread has a local cache so when you declare a variable as a volatile then this read and write operation directly will happen from the uh, uh, main memory right instead of uh, local cache if a variable is not uh, shared between multiple threads then there is no need to use volatile keyword right so if you are not sharing a variable with multiple threads then there is no need to declare your variable as volatile. Now next point you have a using volatile keyword, uh, volatile variable reduces the risk of memory consistency errors. Because any write to volatile variable establishes a, a happens before relationship with subsequent threads of that same variable, right? So basically here what I would like to uh, point uh, over here. So basically this operation basically happens from the uh, main memory instead of local cache. That's the thing I have uh, pointed out in different words, a different uh, uh, way. Now, next point we have volatile variables are lightweight synchronization. When visibility of latest, latest data among all the threads is requirement and atomicity can be compromised. In such situation, volatile variables must be preferred. Read on volatile variable always return most recent write done by any thread since they are neither cached in register nor the caches where other processors can cannot see. Right? Volatile is lock free. Volatile does not use any locking mechanism like synchronized keyword. Now, uh, uh, sorry. Now there are some subtle dif differences between synchronized as well as volatile. So these are the differences I have listed over here. A primitive variable may be declared volatile, right? But you cannot uh, uh, apply, uh, pre uh, you cannot use a primitive data type along with synchronized um, uh, keyword, right? So that's the difference. When you write a synchronized block, you cannot pass the primitive data type, right? Always will have to pass the object, right? And access to the volatile variable never has the potential to block. Uh, we are only, uh, we are only you were doing a simple read or write. So unlike a synchronized block, we will never hold on any lock, right? So basically here I wanted to say, uh, when you write a variable as volatile, then in that case, uh, there is nothing like a, a blocking mechanism. There is nothing like a, like a lock. But if you use a synchronized block, then there there is a blocking mechanism. Your, uh, I mean, your antenna thread do not get the lock, uh, thread cannot access that uh, critical section. So, so basically synchronized is related to lock, but uh, your volatile variable is not related to lock. Because accessing a volatile variable never holds a lock, it is not suitable for, uh, suitable for cases where we want to uh, read, update and write as an atomic operation, right? Unless uh, we are prepared to miss an update right so basically we had seen a couple of example like counter variable right in counter variable there are three steps read uh, update and write this kind of situation so if you have a kind of read write and 
uh, sorry read update and write then uh, uh, if you don't want to miss an update then you should go for the locking mechanism synchronization if you are ready to miss uh, some update then i think volatile is the uh, appropriate choice now volatile variable that is an object reference may be null when you declare a volatile variable then object reference may be null but attempting to synchronize on null object will throw null pointer exception so when you use a synchronized block then you cannot use null reference right if you try to use the null reference then you'll uh, end up with the null pointer exception but if you declare a volatile as uh, if you declare a variable as volatile you can assign a null of course now let's try to understand uh, these things through an example so here you can see uh, in my clips i have written one code uh, for singleton design pattern so there are various ways we can write a singleton design pattern but uh, one of the way i am going to discuss over here and you can see here what we have done we have declared a private static singleton that is the reference of this class and i have a private constructor and here i have a public static method so that uh, we can have a global access point for uh, global access point we want to provide the global access point for this singleton that's what public and a static because we can call by class name itself and here you can see initially I have checked singleton if singleton is null then we go inside and we have a synchronized block so why synchronized block because you can have a many uh, before checking a null you can have a some code and that code you don't want to basically apply a synchronization that's why I haven't apply synchronized keyword before method so I have applied the synchronized block so uh, I mean if you have a num uh, 20 lines of code and you want the only few lines of code to be synchronized right in the critical section in that case you can apply the synchronized block now uh, here uh, this is a static method so apply lock will be applied on the class level so here we have passed singleton dot class and here basically again we are checking singleton is null then we are instantiating this object so why there is double check right that's the reason so and sec second thing is that i would like to ask you a question is is this code is thread safe so answer is absolutely not uh, if you are working on highly concrete environment there is possibility there may be uh, two threads will reach up to this point and that will be able to create a more than one instance for the singleton right so what's the resolution for this so let's discuss this code is not thread safe first of all although it checks the value of inst instance once again with the synchronized block right the jit that's a compiler jit compiler can rearrange the byte code in a way that the reference to instance is set before the constructor has finished its execution right uh, this means that the um, this means the method get instance return an object that may not have been initialized completely. To make the code thread safe, the keyword volatile can be used. Since Java 5 for the instance variable, right, variables that are marked as volatile uh, get only visible to the other threads once the constructor of the object has, has finished its execution completely right so once you put the volatile keyword before this variable then uh, if partial initialization of this object is done then that will not be visible for the other threads right until unless this object is not completely initialized so in that way we can make this class as thread safe right so this is a singleton design pattern uh, basically for multi-threaded environment right and here i have written a client program and in this client program I am making use of executor service I have given the uh, pool size as 5 created uh, two runnable tasks uh, and uh, first task I am calling this uh, get instance method 100 times and trying to print the hash code for the object and again I have a second runnable object there also I am trying to uh, create instance of this class 100 times and just I have submitted this runnable task to our executor service and let's print you can see the hash code will be the same always because only one instance is going to create uh, in this case right so if I run this application then here you can see so hash, co hash code for all the objects are same right because only one instance uh, has been created right so first of all uh, 
last point I would like to mention over here, the synchronization basically or locking basically guarantees visibility and atomicity for, for uh, with a performance cost and volatile guarantees visibility but not atomicity right so that's all i wanted to discuss in this video tutorial guys so guys this code i'm going to check in on the github github location i will specify in the video description uh, itself so here i have created a singleton class in one way but there are various way to create the singleton so uh, don't compare with the other approach as well i'll come up with the uh, all different approach uh, to write a singleton design pattern in the separate video tutorial so that's all i have in this video tutorial guys so guys big thank you for watching this video if you really like this video then please hit on the like button please share and subscribe my youtube channel as well